Good afternoon. Very honored to be here. I bet even if it was just once, the most of you set up a lemonade stand as a kid. But then you grow up, and you begin to have bigger ideas. And many of us have our moments of brilliance in the shower. You know what it's like when you're under the hot water, your mind begins to drift, and suddenly you have a good idea. Sometimes that idea is a solution to a current problem, and sometimes it's a business concept, and sometimes it's both. And generally, people who are solving their own problems make the best entrepreneurs, especially if they have industry or market experience. Now, to give you a little context here, I have a background in professional photography. So, a couple of years ago, on a sunny spring morning, I'm in the shower, and I'm reflecting on my not so organized personal photo collection. My pro photos were very easy to process, but my personal photo collection had grown out of control. It was massive, and it spanned years. There was no organization, and the problem was only getting worse with each passing month. I was no longer able to enjoy my photos, and I knew I wasn't alone. I figured that almost everybody with a smartphone might have this problem. So I came up with an idea for an app that would allow us to sort photos into albums on the phone, and I developed a simple prototype that allowed me to share the idea with people and get their feedback. Everyone I showed it to loved it. So I applied for a six-week program run nationally, designed to help you raise money. And I still remember the final pitch night because I totally crushed it, and I went home on cloud nine. The top teams from around the country were then invited to pitch at Google in New York in the fall. So over the summer, I was able to raise a small friends and family round and build the first version of this app. Fall arrived, and I flew to New York. I still remember walking into the room at Google and seeing the stage. There were lights everywhere. Video cameras from multiple angles, and tons of seats for the investors. I was thrilled because this was my opportunity to really pitch in front of a group of real investors. My pitch went smoothly, and I felt great. Unfortunately, all the investors I met with wanted to see more traction. They loved my idea, but they really wanted to see a rapidly growing user base or substantial revenue, which I just didn't have yet. I needed to get further along before I could raise money, and yet I needed money to get further along. It sort of goes back to getting your first job when no one will hire you without experience, and you need experience to get hired. Having spent the money I raised on the product, I was tapped out. I felt like I had climbed up this huge mountain, only to discover that I was standing at the edge of a cliff, looking across this valley to the other side of startup success. And I felt like a failure, and I was kind of heartbroken. In my reflection, I realized that this is a place where so many good ideas come to die. It turns out that most startups fail because they can't find product market fit before they run out of money. So, if this were true, wouldn't it stand to reason there's a potential wealth of opportunity being lost here? It was at this time that news broke of Elon Musk and his company called Hyperloop. Which is a high-speed train designed to take you from San Francisco to LA in half an hour. The story was about how he'd gotten 400 people to join him in his vision and help build the company for equity. I thought, well, of course, he's Elon Musk. He could probably get 400 people to follow him straight into the sun. <laughs> But then I remembered David Cho. Some of you might recognize this. This is part of the mural he painted at Facebook when they were still early, and Zuckerberg was not recognized as the visionary he is today. Here, Cho had taken equity in lieu of sixty thousand dollars cash, and today that equity is worth over two hundred million dollars. This caused me to take a step back in observation of several trends. The first was the rise of the gig economy. There's a large and rapidly growing number of people participating in freelance work, and you see co-working spaces opening all over the world, and sites like Elance, Odesk, TaskRabbit, and Fiverr, or have become very popular. The second trend was a search for more meaning and purpose in one's work. 
In his TED Talk about finding work you love, Scott Dinsmore asks the question, what is the work you can't not do? As people are moving away from the corporate identity, they're looking for more meaning and purpose, and they want to feel more connected to the work they do. And working as a freelancer gives them the freedom to choose the work they do and where they work and when they work. The third trend was our gravitation to social networks and online communities where we help each other. Of course, we're all familiar with Facebook and LinkedIn and the other very popular networks, but now you see the rise of more niche networks like Nextdoor, which allows you to create a private social network for your neighborhood. In 2014, there were 40,000 neighborhoods on board, roughly one quarter of the country. Today, that number has grown to 99,000, over half the country. So the first wave was, of the internet was really about connecting with information and search. And the second wave is about connecting with people. And Microsoft's recent acquisition for $26 billion of LinkedIn is a case in point. And Hyperloop is a great example of how these three trends have merged. You've got people coming together as a community, doing work on the side for a cause they believe in. So as I processed all of this, I thought, perhaps Elon, as a side effect of all his brilliance, was actually paving the way for a new approach to the way we do work. That perhaps he was laying the foundation for an equity economy. I thought there had to be more people out there that had the same mindset as those that he had gathered. So I did an experiment. I bought a domain called equitydirectory.com and I built a really simple landing page that just said, quality people who work for equity. I purposely didn't spend a lot of time on it. You can see the logo kind of sucks. I downloaded $10 clip art to make it. <laughs> when it was ready, I posted to LinkedIn and Twitter. And 24 hours later, I checked the results. And I was blown away because 40% of the people who hit that page signed up. But what was more amazing is that 60% of the people who signed up were looking to help other people get their company off the ground. And then I had this epiphany. I thought, what if we could create a hub to connect all these people around shared visions and build a bridge across this valley of startup failure? I thought about all the future entrepreneurs we could save and all the good ideas we could bring to life. Suddenly, growing this network and building that bridge became the work I couldn't not do. I had to do my part in helping to create this equity economy. So I shared the results with my friend Lisa, who has a background in technology and finance. She was amazed and offered to help me co-found the company. And then Jason showed up to build the product. And Christopher showed up to advise us. Ben came on board to handle all of our branding. David offered to come on and help out with business development. Jessica offered to tackle user experience. And finally, Adrian showed up. And he built a video to explain how the whole thing works. So we built a new logo and a new website. And we registered on a handful of beta launching sites where early adopters hang out and thousands of people signed up. Then American Genius wrote an article about us. And we started connecting people, and they didn't care we were early in development because we were delivering value, and that's all that really mattered to them. Then Forbes included us in a list of 20 communities that tech entrepreneurs should join. Since then, we've connected hundreds of people with some great success stories, like Fabio, who is a designer in Brazil, we connected with Scott, who's a chief architect at Red Bull in LA. And together, they're working on a new video broadcasting technology. And then there's also Jesse, who is a lead developer at Salesforce that we connected with Hunter, who's a Harvard Business School graduate. And together, they're building a big data platform for the Internet of Things. And now we're in talks with top-tier universities about connecting, with, connecting students with each other. As people move away from this corporate identity, they're looking for ideas that move the world forward. Steve Jobs once said, at Apple, we believe that people with passion have the power to change the world for the better. So what are you good at? And what are you passionate about? Did you once dream of starting a business but had to get a job to pay bills? 
What if you could be part of multiple companies without putting it all on the line? Or maybe you're, maybe you're the entrepreneur who's putting it all on the line, and you need help from these people who believe in your cause, who are willing to dig in and work hard. I truly believe that the equity economy has the power to radically change the world for the better. And I hope you will join me in building a bridge across this valley of startup failure to help bring more of these good ideas we all have in the shower to life. Thank you.